Thanks for tuning in to Shooty School. This video is my personal take on how to get up and running with Easy Drummer 2. I'm using Easy Drummer 2.0.2 64-bit on a Mac 10.10.1 at home, but I also run Easy Drummer at my studio on PC. It's basically the same. Just keep in mind your Mac mouse or laptop may not have that obvious right-click mouse function. And if that's the case with your Mac, you can always hold the control key while left-clicking to achieve that right-click. You can also check your system preferences to see if you can get a right-click function otherwise. If you're looking for more thorough tutorials on this software, check out my YouTube channel Shooty School and look for the Easy Drummer 2 playlist. Because in this video, we're diving in fast for a brief overview so you can be jamming now with your TuneTrack software. Feel free to hit the pause button if I move too fast. Here we go. Let's launch the program. Easy Drummer 2 has a visual interface. Simply click with your mouse on any instrument to audition its sound. You can also click on the small white and black arrow icon on each instrument to bring up that instrument's menu. Here you can change instruments. You'll have more options the more Easy Drummer expansion packs you purchase. Here, you can also change the pitch of your instrument, change the volume, and if you're the type of person that uses the piano roll in your DAW to program MIDI, click on the details button to see which instrument triggers which MIDI note. As you can see here, most instruments have different articulations that can be triggered. Even the toms have a rim shot. You can also access the individual instrument menu simply by right-clicking on them. Take note, Easy Drummer 2 always includes the three extra instruments in the upper right corner. Claps, which is called One Shot, Shaker, and Tambourine. Let's continue finding the sound of the kit that I want. If you click on the orange box in the upper right, you'll reveal a menu. Depending on how many Easy Drummer 2 expansions you purchased, will decide how many drum kits you can choose from. If you bought just Easy Drummer 2, you'll have two choices, Modern and Vintage, which you can get many sounds out of which you'll see. The Vintage kit brings you back to those classic drum sounds from Beatles and Sabbath as a generic example. And the Modern kit will put the modern production value of recorded drums at your fingertips. Each drum set comes with many factory presets which change the sound of your entire kit in one click. To audition all of these presets one at a time in order, click on the arrow buttons next to the orange box. The 80s preset has that signature overdramatic snare for example. If you know which preset you want, then let's click on the orange box again, mouse over the drum kit you're using, which is modern in this case, and select the preset you want in the pop-up submenu. I want the metal preset. As you can hear, metal has that clicking kick drum we need to cut through those high gain metal mixes. It's pretty cool, I think. At this point, we now know how to load the drum set we want, how to manipulate the individual instruments in that drum set, and how to call up a preset to affect the entire sound of the kit. It is easy, as they've named it. For now, I'm going to use the Dry Rock preset on the Modern Kit. I'll select a different snare, tune that new snare up like a piccolo, and slightly lower the volume of the hi-hat, simply because I can. Like that. Now I think I'll load the Roomy Rock preset for the rest of this tutorial. Now let's play with some MIDI. If you already have some MIDI programmed in your DAW, then you're ready to go. Simply insert Easy Drummer 2 as a plugin, program or import your MIDI, and hit play. That's just one way to work though. Let's focus back on the Easy Drummer 2 program for this lesson as it is a self-contained program. So far we've been working in the Drums tab. Let's move one more over to the Browser tab. Here, you can browse through all of the MIDI files from your TuneTrack purchases. The more expansion packs you buy, the more MIDI files you get. You can do whatever you want with these files besides resell them as MIDI files. 
Use them on your next album if you'd like. Anyway, the browser is like how you would have files organized in a filing cabinet or folders on a hard drive. Here, as you can see, we have four vertical panels. On the far left are your libraries. As you click on the libraries, they open up into the next panels as categories and subcategories. When you make it to the last third or fourth panel, that's where you can finally get your individual MIDI files. We're going to start building a new song at the bottom of the interface and the timeline as we continue to search for MIDI files and grooves in the browser. I want to start my song with a four count, so let's go find one. We'll stay in the Easy Drummer 2 Modern Library for this tutorial so everyone can follow along. I'm going to look into Extras, then into Intro Count-Ins, then into Straight 4-4. Here I can hit the small play icon on the MIDI file I'm interested in hearing to audition it. Click the play icon again to stop. This is the one I want to start my song with. So I simply click and drag it to the timeline where it says drag MIDI song blocks here. Next I want to intro drum beat to my song. Although the Easy Drummer 2 categories are helpful, there's no reason to take them literally. If it sounds good for the part you want, then just use it. I will use one of the Phil's beats as the intro of my song. So I'm going to go into mid-tempo, straight 4-4, four, four, Latin touch, nice, and then the Phil's. I'm clicking play to audition the files until I know what I want. This is okay, but I want to keep looking. Here it is, Variation 4. This sounds good to me for an epic intro, so I'll drag it to the timeline. After it's in the timeline, I can click and drag it to where I want it to be. Notice the MIDI files will snap to the grid. As you can see at the top of the timeline, you should notice the numbers that represent measures. Surely, I want an intro that's more than a measure long. So I can continue to drag the MIDI files down to lengthen my intro like this, or I could select a MIDI file in the timeline, right click on it, and select copy. Now move further in the timeline to a blank portion and right click and select paste all. Remember to reposition the files as needed and avoid unwanted gaps in your timeline. Now I'll quickly repeat these steps to build a very short song. I'm sorting through the categories. I think I'm going to stay in the mid-tempo category and the straight 4-4 subcategory. Here we go. Mid-tempo, pop, verse. Since I'm looking for a verse, let's audition the next potential section. Okay. Here, I like variation too. So I'll drag and drop it to the timeline. I'm going to finish constructing my song. Build your own song if you'd like, or build the one I'm building. Don't forget to hit pause if I'm moving too quickly. I'm going to go into mid-tempo pop, pre-chorus, I'm auditioning. I think I want variation three. Here we go. I'm going to go into messy rock, looking for a chorus. No, next one, next one, let me just try this one, yeah, that works, variation 5. Categories or keywords are represented by different colored blocks in the timeline which will help you see which sections are which. Now that I have one revolution of song structure, which is intro, verse, pre-chorus, and chorus, I'll typically make that repeat two more times to complete our generic song. We're skipping the bridge today. This is a generic pop song. If I right click in a blank area of the timeline, I will see an option to select all. Let's click on that. Now every MIDI file that we've placed in the timeline is selected. Now mouse over any selected MIDI file, right click on it, and select copy. 
To paste accurately, right-click immediately after the last MIDI file in the timeline and select Paste All. There we go. But there's one problem. I don't want that gray 4-count MIDI file in the middle of my song, so I'll go to it and right-click on it and select Remove, which now leaves an unwanted gap in my song. ToonTrack unfortunately doesn't allow a lot of common key commands, like selecting Delete on your keyboard, for example. This can be explained better in a different video. But for now, we will use one of the useful key commands to assist us on selecting multiple clips and closing that gap in our timeline. Let's select the next MIDI file after the gap by clicking once on it. Then we'll use the horizontal scroll tool, just below right here, to move and scroll to the end of our song. Just click and drag it. Now we will hold shift on our keyboard and select the last MIDI file by clicking on it. Now I'm scrolling back, and as you can see, we have the second half of the song selected because it is highlighted. Now click and drag anywhere on the highlighted portion and drag it over a little until the gap is closed, and then release. But don't click anywhere else. Now that the second half of the song is still highlighted, we can now right click on it, select copy, and now paste our new edited version of the song in, which now does not have a 4 count MIDI file. This is the basic way to make and edit a song quickly in Easy Drummer 2. Put your main parts together, copy, paste, and make minor edits. More in-depth features are explored in other videos. Lastly, in the timeline we can place the playback needle or CTI for playback anywhere we want just by clicking on the ruler portion of the timeline, like this. You can also click and drag in the timeline with your cursor to place your CTI. Let's put it at the beginning of the song on beat 1 for now. Below we have typical transport playback controls. Selecting loop will bring up an orange bar that can drag around the timeline and shorten or lengthen to your desire. Just click and drag it, and then you can drag the end handles to the area you want to loop. Let's hit play. This is how you can focus on just one section of the song while maintaining playback. Moving along, play and stop work as you would expect. As for the record button, and just next to it the sign dialog, which is short for time signature, those can be covered in a different video. To adjust tempo, simply select the tempo numeral, and slide the slider left or right to your desired tempo. More nifty than that, you can use the tap feature on the right side of the dialog box. I'm now clicking very slowly, and the tempo has changed drastically. I will now bring the tempo back to 120 by double clicking on the tempo, typing 120, and hitting return, which is yet another method to alter tempo. If you want to hear a metronome the entire time during playback, select the click button. And lastly, you can adjust the overall volume with the volume slider. Let's hit stop, deselect loop, and deselect click before moving on. Let's place the CTI on measure 6 in the timeline. Simply hit spacebar on the keyboard or click on the play button to hear the song. Hit spacebar again or click on stop to stop the playback. When you do this, the cursor will return to the last location you placed the CTI in the timeline. Let's hit play again. Now if you hit the play button a second time instead of the stop button, it will act as a pause function, keeping your place in the song. So there's two ways to stop. One brings you back to where you started, and the other one pauses you in place. It's helpful to hit stop when you want to return to the part of song you're working on, for example. But it's also helpful just to hit pause if you want a brief break listening to the song and want to continue where you left off. Now we have the drum kit we want and a song to play. We will briefly look at the search section which is the next main tab in the application. This is simply a more in-depth version of the browser among other things. It helps you find MIDI files. In the upper portion there are six columns to sort your libraries and keywords. 
It's a similar process as the browser section, except much more detail. You can click from left to right, or now in any order you want to sort the criteria. Except now the resulting MIDI files show up at the bottom single column. Select a file and click on the play button to audition it. Let's find an outro for our song. Note that you can click on multiple keywords in the same column now. And to deactivate a selected keyword, you simply select it a second time. Like that. So now I'm searching. Here we go. I'm going to look through Modern, Endings, Searching Around, Searching Around, Halftime Pushy Rock 135. I like this. It sounds good to me. Let's bring it to the timeline by clicking and dragging it. The search tab goes into much more great depth, which can be explored in a different video. Now we're at the final stage of Easy Drummer 2. We have our song and our sounds. Let's mix the drum kit real quick. Select the final tab, Mixer. Here we see the interface turn into a cool mixing board and a few simple effects for the drums. Note that some drums, like the kick and snare, have multiple channels since multiple mic placements were used to record them. Also note that for convenience, some drums have been grouped into a single stereo channel, such as the toms and overheads. Let's put the CTI at the beginning of the song in your timeline and hit play. Simply grab the mixer faders to raise and lower the volumes as you feel the need. Mute instruments you don't want to hear, or mute and solo instruments you want to isolate by using the mute and solo buttons. At the top of each channel, there are panning options to move the instruments around in the stereo field. Because tune track is realistic, keep in mind that some of the drum microphones come through other drum microphones. This is called bleed or microphone bleed. The bleed can be controlled by the mic bleed effect. When you adjust Easy Drummer effects, only the channels that will benefit from that effect you're adjusting will be highlighted in orange. I'll solo the overhead and adjust the bleed so you can hear the subtle difference. You can hear the drum hits bleeding through the overhead microphones. Now we have a much more direct sounding drum kit with no mic bleed. and back to introducing the bleed for a more natural feel. Let's adjust the EQ. As you can see again, it only affects certain channels indicated by which are highlighted. Now the entire mix has a more processed feel. Tweak your mix for a moment and we'll wrap up our tutorial. Or if you want the mixer to start from scratch because you went too spaz-tastic, Select the small drop-down menu in the upper right and click on Reset Mixer. I'm going to hit Stop. Finally, to save your work, go to File, Save or Save As, name your project, and select the location you desire on your hard drive. To close this tutorial, I encourage you to check out the Easy Drummer 2 manual and take a look at my YouTube channel for more in-depth tutorials on Easy Drummer 2 when you're ready to take it to the next level. On my channel, just look for my Easy Drummer 2 playlist. The Easy Drummer 2 manual can be viewed simply by going to the upper right main menu button and selecting Operation Manual. ToonTrack.com also has a support section if something blows up. Now you're ready to start jamming, writing, or even mixing your next song. I hope you got something out of this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Comments and corrections are welcome below. Rock on.